So what are you looking to see this weekend? What are you looking for? A totally different team than I saw last week, which I, that that's a big worry. Like, offensively, I can't see what I saw last week for Mississippi State unless they just want to get run off the field. They have to be totally different. Defensively, yeah, the, the team that forced five turnovers, they can show up. They'll be fine. But they. But I say that at the same time, the team that allowed Jaden Delora to run wild and have those big gains and, and escape pressure, Jaden Daniels will turn those into even bigger plays. All right, so, so let me stop you there for a second. So you, you said offensively it's got to be completely different, defensively okay, and then you put the caveat there, but – is it just the running, or is it also the big plays in the passing game? Well, I think a lot of the big plays in the passing game came as a result of him being able to escape pressure. You know, when when yeah. somebody breaks containment and they roll out, and you just and you, you just can't cover sometimes for as long as as, as State was giving him. Well, let's put it this way, uh, in, in terms of the explosiveness, because because that uh, I'll talk about for the rest of the week. I gave you the stat yesterday about air yards traveled. All but four of Mississippi State's offensive plays, the guy that was given the football got it at at seven yards past the line of scrimmage or closer. we're, We're talking seven yards. Only four plays went further than seven yards in the air. Seven yards. Only four. That's next-level conservatism that's hard to kind of wrap your mind around. The overwhelming majority of Will Rogers' throws were at the line of scrimmage or just beyond the line of scrimmage. With that defense now fully intact, by the way, and now we're going to get to look or get a look at whether or not Perkins is actually playing the correct position. That They said last week that what they did against Florida State's not going to happen anymore. That's disappointing. I really was hoping that, that LSU was going to kind of dig its heels in and say, by golly, we think he's going to be a better playmaker as a middle linebacker, and we don't care what you say about it. We're going to do it. At least till the end of the month, right, Richard? Yeah. I mean, that, that feels like yeah. an October adjustment. Kind of like last year, the adjustment I'm was, with you. I'm with Harold you. Perkins should play. And they made that adjustment, and it worked out pretty well. I feel like they should go, like, position change around the 1st of October for uh, for Harold Perkins this year. Uh, perhaps a quicker learner than that. He was di- – didn't he almost kill the, the quarterback from Grambling this past week? Like, not intentionally. Not, li- not like with a knife I, or a gun. I just have like, not watched a highlight so of that hard. Game, so. Yeah. He didn't have a knife is what you're saying. Okay, I got you. No, no, this was not a shiv issue. This was, this was just good old clean football where he nearly broke someone in half. Sports talk miss was what are you what are you looking for this weekend? What are you looking for in Mississippi State's game at home against LSU, the SEC opener for those two teams. Ole Miss's third game of the year, non-conference game against Georgia Tech, an improved Georgia Tech team with a different quarterback in Haynes King and a different head coach now in uh, in Brent Key. And and frankly a team that kind of gave one away in the season opener. Yeah, Georgia Tech should have won that game on that Friday night before the, the big opening Saturday against Louisville in, in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. They just should have. Yeah. So, anything else, hey, Dad, on, on the state game that you're looking for? Like I said, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see if, if a, you know, no pun intended, if a Tiger can change his stripes. Barbe, you know, these first two games, we haven't we haven't seen that vertical passing game that we saw a lot of in practice, that we saw a lot of in the spring game. Um, and I don't know if that's been a lot that's been limited by injury, you know, with Tulu and, and uh, Zavion being out. Uh, but I want to see more of that. I want to see more creativity. You know, I don't want to see this vanilla game plan because, honestly, I think LSU is – that's the wrong – that's the wrong team to try that on. You know, I, I think based on the people I've talked to this week, feels like it State's game plan should be to come out passing and try to test that LSU secondary, which is one of the craziest things I've ever said. It's LSU we're talking about, but their secondary is a question mark. So 
test that early and then try to find the running game later on. It seems to be the right idea, but I, I, ha- I have no idea what State's going to look like offensively, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe Barbe has played the, the cards close to the chest and said, look, we're just going to – we're going to vanilla it up these first couple of games, and then we'll let it rip against LSU. I don't see that happening very often in college football, but we'll see if it happens this weekend. And doing that and then losing to Arizona would have been a remarkably stupid thing. Would have been a was... terrible idea, but it, but you got through it. You you, you beat them, so maybe you, you get maybe you got yourself a chance to do it. I don't know. It's only two games. It's only two games. But the, this idea that the offense wasn't going to be any different, it's, it's not it's just – you know, just a little different, not that much different after two games. So, under Mike Leach in three years, Mississippi State, here's your stat of the day. Ran the football 25% of their offensive plays and had 51 pass attempts per game. How about that? that does that number surprise you? That number surprised me, that it was as high as 25%. But 25% of their plays were runs, 51 passes per game. Through two games... They run the ball 61% of the time and have thrown 23 passes per game. That, my friends, is a dramatic difference. And the 23 passes per game is because they threw it 30 times in the opener. 17 last week. Yeah. Yeah. Some of what you want to see on the C Spire text line, 601-879-4395. Bubba in Meridian says, in the MSU-LSU game, can Mississippi State's offensive line move LSU's defensive line? It's a big test. Big test. Especially with You know, it's funny. You're talking, again, talking to LSU people. Grambling had success on the ground against LSU in that game, early especially. They, 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 they broke off some large chunk plays on the ground. And LSU's defense is just – it just feels like they're a really good team that hasn't figured everything out yet. They don't have all the pieces in place yet on both sides of the ball. And we'll see if, if this weekend sort of helps them with that or if State can you know continue to, to keep them confused. Uh, another message, I think Miss, uh, LSU is about as confused about what Mississippi State is going to do offensively as everybody else is, which I think is a good thing. Are, are they confused, oh. though? I don't know that it really changes how they're going to defend Mississippi State. I mean, they've got two absolute studs on the defensive line, and so they don't have to blitz a ton. Apparently, they decided that inside linebacker, middle linebacker, was not necessarily the best place for Harold Perkins to make plays, and so made an adjustment there. And uh, as we mentioned in the last segment, he nearly committed a homicide in the game. I I, I shouldn't say it's not a good way to joke, but, I mean, just he was really good. He was really good. Um, Dwayne and Brandon says he is looking for State to throw the ball more and he is looking for Arnett to stay out of the offensive game plan. But isn't it more than just throw the ball more? I mean, because if those 17 attempts were 27 attempts and they were the same types of throws, you're still not beating LSU. If you're keeping everything at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage more times, guess what's going to happen? Yeah, it's it's not about number of passes. It's about where those passes go. You know, Mississippi State fans, when Barbe was hired and throughout this offseason, have been promised verticality. Time to show some of that. David says he, uh, what is he looking at? He's looking at Mississippi State at plus 290 on the money line. Okay. Um, you you want to see a bunch of... Uh... Bunch of people turn on Brian Kelly two games into year two. Ooh. Three games into year two, excuse me. Lose to Florida State the way they did and then lose to Mississippi State in your SEC opener. Um, I don't know what this has to do with what you're looking for on Saturday, but somebody says getting to our tailgate at 7 a.m. Saturday morning, the Bloody Marys will be flowing for the dogs. So, Hey, sounds like a good morning. 